Has this ever happened to you? You finally plan to take a self-portrait after waiting for a good hair day for weeks. And now, nobody else is home and you know that this is the moment you've been waiting for. And then, as you confidently tap dance towards your closet, the dreaded sense of despair starts seeping in. and you curl up in a little ball on the floor because you can't take your photo and what was going to be a perfectly jolly day is now ruined. <laughs> There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. Would you be my song and I'll be your song? Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Kika and if you just watched the intro and could relate even a teeny tiny little bit <laughs> that this video is for you my friend i will not judge you for curling up in a little ball on the bedroom floor i have to admit been there done that even though i'm not proud of it we're going to dive straight into this video because let's face it this is important stuff folks um but before we do i just wanted to say that all these styles and ideas or outfits are my personal style and things i like to wear obviously this will depend and Still, hopefully you can get some ideas and inspiration, even if they're not like exactly your style. Let's jump right into it. So we are going to start off with one of my absolute favorite go-to pieces, the white shirt. The reason I love to wear white shirts in photos is because A, it reflects light in a really nice way, so you can really see all the details. And B, because it's such a neutral color, it fits with almost any surrounding or backdrop. When choosing what type of white shirt, I usually like to look for pieces that have some details, so like some lace trimmings or embroidery details and things that bring structure to it. Now this will obviously depend a little bit on your style and if you want a more modern and cool look, then maybe try to look for more simple styles and more clean cut. And if you want more kind of a vintage and romantic mood, then try to look for little details like lace trimmings and frills and whatnot. <laughs> Moving on to the dress. Dresses work so well in photos because you have all this fabric that allows to play with movement and give some serious potential for flirting or skirting around the camera. <laughs> and you get all these added dynamic possibilities. And again, this will depend a little bit on the style of your photos. So for a more magical and kind of fairy tale vibe, I usually like to wear quite long dresses and dresses that are a little cinched, 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 how do you pronounce that? Cinched? Well, cinched around the waist, because <laughs> I feel like it gives it a more classical and feminine silhouette. And then for more playful and modern photos, I like to wear dresses that are a little shorter and maybe fabrics that are not so um, flouncy or bouncy <laughs> and also choose maybe a color palette that is more bright and graphic. Moving on to the dungarees. So my addiction for dungarees started back in year 2017. I think it all started with me seeing a photo on Instagram of a girl wearing these really cute pink dungarees and she looked so happy and I also wanted to be that happy. Also, I really like how dungarees defy all definitions. I mean, are they trousers? Is it a dress? Who knows? Also, I have an unhealthy obsession with pockets. So yeah, the addiction was pretty immediate and I still haven't found a cure or solution for it. <laughs> okay, so the reason I love to wear dungarees is you get this extra piece of fabric here on top that you can then combine with different shirts. So you get, you can basically add more color to your photo and more kind of interesting details up here, especially if it's a photo that will be cut off by your waist. <laughs> and the other reason I love to wear dungarees, both the trouser or dress kind, is it kind of sends out the message to the world that yes, I am practical, but I also want to look stylish. And in the case of a sudden renovation emergency, I am ready, Bob the Builder style or if I get a crazy urge to play in a sandbox. Hey, I'm prepared. <laughs> now, 
Now, when it comes to find the perfect dungarees, it can be a little bit of a challenge. Like I have pretty long torso and long legs as well, actually. Um, so sometimes like these straps will not be long enough and they will <clears throat> hike up my uh, behind. Yes, um, but definitely one brand that I think have pretty generous and good sizing is Monkey. It's kind of a mm, acquired taste, like they, they're pretty wild in their designs, but they have pretty good sizing. These are from Pull and Bear. I know other stories have also had some, Cezanne, um, but yeah, you just have to kind of find what brand makes dungarees that work for your body type. Next up, the knitted sweater. Now, you know I'm a passionate knitter, but even though if you don't have a stash of hand-knitted sweaters in your closet, just adding a knitted texture to your photo is such a good way to bring in some interesting surfaces and the tactile feeling to your photo, um, especially for photos that only show kind of your hands and some details. I like to wear knitwear just because I feel like it brings well also a coziness to it, but also just texture and structure and it's nice to have those details in the photo. And lastly, colors. Now, I will always try to think about what the color of the surrounding or the palette will be in my photo and then take that into consideration when choosing my outfit. Or sometimes it's the other way around, I'll choose my outfit and that color will then kind of determine what surrounding or backdrop I will choose. So if I know that I will be taking my photo against a dark wall, I will probably wear something light colored because otherwise I won't really be visible in the photo and it's gonna be difficult to read what's going on. But on the other hand, if the whole point is to blend in, obviously I will then make decisions that complement that idea. Now there's a whole lot of psychology when it comes to colors, but what I usually do is I get inspired by the seasons. So now when it's been autumn, I've been really taking photos with colors that are very warm, so like lots of orange and yellow and brown and red, and have a very kind of rich color world. <laughs> but in the summer, it was much more colder and more pastel-y and much more light colors. So I tend to just get inspired by what's going on in nature around me and the season. The only color I kind of stay away from or I don't really use so much when it comes to outfits is black or very dark colors. And that's just because like in my closet I don't have that much black or very dark things and the other reason is because black absorbs light so I just feel like you can't really see the details then in the photo so yeah that's maybe one color that I tend to not do so much. All right you guys that was it thank you so much for watching I hope you got some ideas or inspiration and the next time when that despair hits um, just you know take a deep breath and to be honest, like some of the pieces uh, I just wear over and over in photos because they just work so well. So when you find something that you think generally works for the style or type of photos you do, just re-wear it. Nobody cares, you know, nobody will mind. Um, so I definitely have my go-to pieces that I always feel like, oh, again, will I again wear this white dress? But, you know, better that than you get a photo that you kind of know it will work than trying out something crazy. I mean, obviously sometimes you have to do that as well. Uh, but yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, if you'd like to see more of my stuff, then I'd love for you to come and say hi. I'm over at Kudo Akika on Instagram. Also, maybe consider subscribing and hitting the thumbs up. <laughs> and now, up until Christmas, I'm going to do two videos a week, sort of as an experiment. So every Wednesday and Sunday, so you have the chance to see lots of me if you want. <laughs> um, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Bye, have a good one. Hello, hello, in my bonnet, hello. That is not a Hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello.